All right, so it's time to take a look at the classification of the kingdom fungi. And uh, there are five main groups, and they're classified primarily by their structures, their reproductive structures, um, mostly by their sexual reproductive structures. And the first thing that I want to uh, note here is that there are both common names and phylum names here, and the phylum names are what are in parentheses. So I'm just going to go ahead and read these through and pronounce them for you. So we've got Zygomycota, Ascomycota, Basidiomycota, Catridiomycota, and Glomeromycota. And you'll notice they all end in mycota. So anytime you see a biological term that has myco in it, it's going to be in reference to fungi. So for example, um, biologists that study fungi are known as mycologists. So those are the phylum names, but you'll hear them commonly referred to as zygomycetes and ascomycetes and basidiomycetes and catridiomycetes and glomeromycetes. And um, that's, those are just kind of uh, common ways of referring to the phylum, but those are not phylum names. So uh, try not to confuse them with phylum names. The phylum names always end in mycota. So again, they're named for their reproductive structures. So zygomycota is called that because it forms zygospores. And that's what we're seeing here in this image. Uh, we're talking about the common molds. And if you look under the microscope at a mold, like bread mold, um, this is what you would see. These are sporangiophores that have sporangia at their tips, and those sporangia are producing spores, and that's the asexual form of reproduction. But when they reproduce sexually, hyphae come together, two mating hyphae, two opposite mating types of hyphae, plus and minus, come together, and their nuclei fuse. And remember, those nuclei are haploid. When they fuse, they become diploid. And that forms, uh, and each nucleus then, each diploid nucleus is a zygote. You know, that's what you get when you have fertilization. When Usually when sperm fertilizes the egg, it produces a zygote. So what we have in this zygospore are thousands of zygote nuclei uh, that can then germinate and give rise to new individuals. So during sexual reproduction, they form zygospores, and that's why they're known as zygomycota. Ascomycota are uh, also named for their sexual reproductive structure known as an ascus. And ascus means sac. So these are also known as sac fungi. And this is the structure we're talking about. These two images represent uh, ascomycota. And this, each one of these stacks of spores uh, is contained within a, a sac-like structure. And that's and this is the reason they call these ascomycete fungi or ascomycota is because whoever looked at these spore-producing structures under the microscope for the first time felt that they looked like sacs, sacs full of spores. So that's why they call uh, these the sac fungi. And as, asco refers to that sac uh, sexual reproductive structure. Likewise, Basidiomycota is named for its sexual reproductive structure. They're known as the club, <coughs> club fungi because the sexual reproductive structure, and up here is where we're looking at Basidiomycota, um, and, but this is the only view that's magnified enough to barely be able to see the uh, sexual reproductive structures. They're known as bas, uh, Basidia, um, and Basidium means club. So they're known as the club fungi because of the shape of their spore-producing, sexual spore-producing reproductive structures, basidiomycota. So mainly when you think basidiomycota, think mushroom or toadstool. And if you've ever looked on the underside of a toadstool or a mushroom, there are gills. And so this is a magnified view of, of the gills. Uh, and then this is a, a high, even higher magnified view of the gills. And the gills are lined with those basidia, with those reproductive structures. It's the same in an ascomycete fungi, too. The gills <clears throat> are lined with uh, these reproductive structures known as ASCII. So you'll notice that there is a, a fourth one here that has been crossed out. The imperfect fungi, known as deuteromycota. Uh, this group has been outdated by DNA sequence analysis. So by, you know, it wasn't until we were able to, to sequence the DNA, the DNA of fungi that we realized that deuteromycota really doesn't even exist. 
and that the, the members of deuteromycota actually <clears throat> belong in the phylum Ascomycota. But I wanted to make you aware of that uh, phylum name because you'll still see it out there. It's kind of like the same thing with um, all prokaryotes being lumped into the kingdom Monera. That, that kingdom no longer exists, but you'll still see it out there if you go searching for, for the kingdom of bacteria. Likewise for Deuteromycota. Um, these two I added recently because they are very important groups. So we've got uh, Catridiomycota and glom Glomeromycota. And Catridiomycota, uh, Catridio means cup-like, so it refers to the cup-like uh, organ that contains the spores before they're released. And these are special spores. They're zoospores. And uh, we've seen zoospores in life cycles before, back when we were studying uh, protista, because zoospores are able to swim. They have flagella and they're able to swim. And this is a real important uh, group ecologically. I mean, all fungi are important ecologically, but this group uh, specifically is the one responsible for uh, amphibian decline. Uh, there's a, a certain uh, species of Catridiomycete fungi that infects the skin of amphibians and prevents them from being able to exchange gas through their skin and they eventually suffocate basically and die. So uh, that's an important group because of that reason. And then another important group, uh, the phylum Glomeromycota, are also known as Mycorrhiza because uh, they form a symbiotic relationship with plants and help plants grow, help plants get the nutrients that they need to grow. And we'll be looking at uh, mycorrhiza in greater detail later on. We'll be looking at all these in greater detail later on. This is just the introduction. But glomero means ball of yarn, and it refers to the specialized hyphae that grow into, onto, and into the roots of the plant, um, which looks like a tangled ball of yarn under the microscope. So that's where they get their name. And I, as I told you previously, uh, you know, these are hyphae we're talking about that look like a ball of yarn. And you could so you could also refer to that as a mycelium because a mycelium is a tangled mat of hyphae. Um, and they're also known as hostoria. They're specialized um, hyphae for growing on and into the roots. Oh, and I also have no images on this slide for these two groups because I, like I said, I added them recently. And as you can see, this slide is really getting uh, annotated up. So we'll take a look at the phyla one at a time. And so we'll start with zygomycota. So this, the phylum name is what's up here in parentheses. So it doesn't say phylum zygomycota. You need to remember that it is a phylum. And uh, if you're taking notes, make sure you, you write phylum uh, along with it or put a P in front of it, as long as you'll remember that P stands for phylum. But anyway, we're talking about the common molds. Like the molds you find, you, the mold you find growing on the strawberries in the refrigerator if you leave them in there too long, or growing on bread if you leave it out too long. Um, but eventually molds will grow even if you refrigerate things, as I'm sure you've experienced. Uh, but, whoops. So just to orient you to this diagram, um, you know, when you look at bread mold, basically what you see is what we see right here on, on the diagram. You just kind of see something colored growing on your bread. But if you zoom in, that's what this represents. This is a, uh, what would be a microscopic view of what's going on. And, and remember, we're talking about multicellular structures here. Uh, these are sporangiophores, which are the hyphae that are specialized to produce sporangia at their tips. And then the sporangia are what produce spores. So sporangia are the spore producing structures <clears throat> that grow at the tips of sporangia fours, which are the specialized hyphae. But that's asexual reproduction, uh, and those spores then will land on the same piece of bread or blow to another piece of bread and germinate and start to grow. So, so you can see why mold will like cover the bread in no time, like in a day, it can be completely covered with mold because of the asexual reproduction that's going on. Um, you'll also note that there is sexual reproduction going on here. Uh, these are two; these represent two mating types, the green and the red here. Remember that we refer to them as plus and minus. Uh, mating types or plus and minus strains and it almost looks like they're holding hands here uh, but they send out specialized hyphae called stolons that run horizontally along the bread and when they meet they uh, will sexually reproduce and what that means is that they will both uh, produce 
gamete, gametangia, as they're known as, and in those gametangia are nuclei. And remember, these, uh, the body of the fungus is already haploid, so they don't need to produce these nuclei by meiosis because they're already, they already have half the number of chromosomes. They're already haploid. Um, so what happens is the gametangia will fuse, and then the nuclei will fuse, and that will form zygotes. And then the zygote, um, the zygotes, the zygote nuclei that are now diploid will uh, get surrounded by a tough covering, a tough uh, material that will, and this is what we're looking at here in this electron micrograph, the scanning electron micrograph. You can see this thing looks really tough, like it can last, uh, you know, through a lot of punishment. Um, and that's the zygospore. And it contains a lot of zygotes, a lot of uh, nuclei, diploid, diploid nuclei. And then eventually the zygospore, if it lands in an appropriate environment, will germinate and produce a sporangia 4, which will produce a sporangium, which will produce spores, and the whole thing starts over again. And that's just a, an introduction to the life cycle, because we're going to look at it in greater detail as we move along here. And before we move on, I just want to point out that I just realized there was a mistake on the slide. So I just deleted the uh that was here and the uh, cross out of the s here. Because uh, at one point I thought it contained only one zygote, but it actually zygospores contain many zygotes, many zygote nuclei. All right, I like this image. It doesn't, ha it doesn't include any sexual reproduction here, um, but... Again, you know, what you normally see on the bread would be this black stuff growing on the bread, on the surface of the bread. And if you could zoom in on it, ma uh, magnify it under a microscope, you would see the sporangiophores. Um, so that's what we're looking at again. And they're producing spores asexually simply by uh, mitosis because they're already haploid. They produce those spores by mitosis. So they produce haploid spores from haploid sporangia by mitosis. Um, but what I like about it is, is it shows what's really going on inside the bread. There are vegetative hyphae, as we call them, that are growing into the bread and uh, feeding on the bread. And so even if you were to scrape off the fungus from the outside, even if you were to scrape off the mold that you can see on the surface, there's still all kinds of fun fungus, and probably the, most of the fungus is actually inside the bread and growing through the bread. And, and those are hyphae that are specialized for feeding and growing, and we call those vegetative hyphae. Um, we also refer to them as rhizoids because they're root-like. The, the term rhizoid in biology refers to anything that is root-like. It's not a true root because, you know, these are not true roots. True roots are what we find in vascular plants. Uh, but it's they're root-like. They look like roots, so we call them rhizoids. Um, but those are vegetative hyphae, and then there are reproductive hyphae too, asexual reproductive hyphae in this case. If, but if these were two different mating mating types, which they're not, um, but if they were, then sexual reproduction might take place between them. Uh, what's really happened here is uh, another form of asexual reproduction, where this individual has sent out a rise uh, uh, stolen this horizontal um, hyphae running along the surface of the bread. And when it got over here, it put down rhizoids and it put up sporangiophores. Um, and, and that will continue. Another stolen might go over here and do the same thing. And so this is another way that the mold quickly spreads across the bread asexually. So everything inside the bread is vegetative hyphae and everything on the surface of the bread that you can actually see is reproductive hyphae. What we're looking at here is a closer look at part of the diagram that's actually on the next slide, um, mainly for sexual reproduction, but I wanted to remind you that asexual reproduction is going on over here. So again, these are haploid uh, sporangiophores that are producing haploid spores by mitosis. But here we've got two different mating types. These do represent two different mating types, two different uh, uh, opposite individuals, plus and minus. And so when their gametangia, their, their specialized hyphae form gametangia, the gametangia fuse, and then the nuclei within the gametangia fuse and form uh, diploid zygotes. And then the diploid zygotes are walled off by this very tough protective covering. And that's what is uh, considered a zygospore. And that zygospore can last a long time uh, and survive harsh conditions, you know, dry and hot and so forth. 
But when the conditions become suitable for growth, then it will germinate and uh, give rise to sporangiophores that will produce sporangia and, and, and then spores. So right here is the same thing that we were just looking at on the previous slide. We've got our uh, zygospore that has formed, and when it encounters a suitable habitat, a suitable environment, it will germinate and give rise to a sporangiophore. And at the tip of the sporangiophore, a sporangium will form. And then that sporangium will produce spores by meiosis because the, spur, the zygote, the zygote uh, nuclei are diploid. It will give rise to a diploid a sporangiophore. The sporangium then um, is where the cells undergo meiosis, producing haploid spores. So we go from diploid to haploid by meiosis. And that's how we always go from diploid to haploid, if you'll recall. So the spores go back to being haploid. The spores then, germ then germinate and give rise to hyphae that are all haploid. Um, and so, again, that's the general life cycle of, of all fungi is that they are primarily haploid. And about the only diploid part of their life cycle is when they are a zygote. So that's it for zygomycota. Uh, next time we'll take a look at ascomycota and then uh, finish up uh, with basidiomycota and then take a look at uh, the ecology of fungi.